Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Clay Ramage. It's Monday when I'm filming this. You'll see this on Tuesday. But it's another Goodwill Bins haul today. Cindy and I went, um, found some good stuff, and uh, we spent a total of $53.69. And some of that was for personal use, $3.68 for books. Um, $4.41 in glassware. Tells you we picked up quite a bit at $0.49. Cents. Picked up nine pieces. Um, one electronic. We had 22 pounds of, of um, household goods that they weigh. And two pounds of textiles. Cindy found a number of pieces of clothing. So that was exciting. So um, let's just get right into this. Uh, da, 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 da. Where do I start? All right, I'm just going to start with some big stuff. All right, this was also kind of a weird thing to find at the bins. And there's usually lots of weird things at the bins, but this even surprised me. It's a canvas tote bag, Los Angeles County Coroner. <laughs> Cracked me up. And then on this side, it has the seal for the Los Angeles County Coroner. And so I, I looked it up because I was like, do they just sell these? Did somebody work there and get rid of it? Uh, you know, it's very clean. It's not been used very much at all. Um, and what I found is that they do sell um, these things as promotional items. So, but I didn't find any of these tote bags. I found t-shirts. I found a laptop bag, stuff like that. But nothing with the actual tote bag. And that's why I actually picked it up because I thought, well, there's no other tote bags listed. So I'll have the market on that, at least on eBay. So, uh, <laughs> so there, we got the weird thing out of the way first. And then um, I, we, we went into the uncomfortable zone for me a little bit and I found a couple purses. Um, neither one have a name in them. This is a beautiful green leather. It's real leather got a beautiful interior and I'm pretty sure this is vintage um, as opposed to a modern again no label that I can find anywhere on it um, what is that oh that's just a piece of paper stuck in the zipper and the zipper is unmarked but the zipper doesn't look very old so it's one of those there was just a piece of tissue stuff in there that was just, I don't know. It was hard to tell what this is, but um, I just loved it. Loved that green style with the braided handle. Um, and the more I look at it, the more I don't think it's that old. I think it's designed to look old. And you can see it's even got a mottled finish in that it kind of looks like it's dirty in certain areas but not others, but not dirty in the way that you would expect it to be dirty from use. So, um, so yeah, so I think it's more of a modern purse, but it's got a nice vintage look to it. And then this one is a, which kind of surprised me. It's a, I don't know if it'll show up on camera. Yeah, there you go. Circuit du Soul, Soel, the, uh, um, you know, the performing arts troupe that does uh, circus related um, performances um, and it's marked on the inside as well this is again another beautiful leather purse um, with these wonderful funky pockets on the outside and I actually found like um, 80 some cents in these pockets I didn't even know it till I got home or got back here to the shop and I was like oh look at that and then the uh, it also has Cirque du Soleil on the um, hang tag on the zippers so uh, that should be good and again these there's a number of these out here not high dollar probably $25 $20-$25 on this green one same one probably probably listed around $25 $20-$25 um then I found this vintage bear and it says he sounds like me he sounds like me he sounds like me this is one of those talking bears he doesn't work anymore a dandy talking bear one of the dandy was the first brand to come out with the talking bear and this particular guy is made in taiwan according to his tag so that dates him 
quite a bit quite old I don't know if he works I'll have to check into it and he is a little dirty he does have still have a battery in the back a 9 volt so we can take that out check him but yeah he's a little dirty but we'll see if we can clean him up a little bit I thought that was kind of fun those um, bears are again about a $25 item um, for the vintage ones I did not find that particular one in my quick search when I looked them up um, but that's kind of our little theme today here's our one electronic saw this and it's a night owl whoops got it upside down night owl optics night vision binoculars basically and you can see the strap is still wrapped in plastic so I don't know that it was used but it had some sticky stuck over the top of it I'll have to see if that comes off I didn't plug it in or anything but these actually sell for um, $50 on up so this particular brand it even has a, a Russia sticker on it so I assume it's from Russia made in Russia and then imported here so that was a unique find um, now the drafting kits can be valuable depending upon the ouch and dangerous depending upon the um, brand this is a picket from Germany West Germany it was made um, and then it's got some a bunch of other accessories in it so then I look at I poke myself I'm even bleeding biohazard um, so again I picked this up and uh, I'll check and see I've sold those before those are pretty good sellers picked up a uh, let me find a Towel here. Sorry. Um, I want to get blood all over thing. Picked up a vintage Holiday Inn ashtray. And this is this smoky color. Now, there's one listed on eBay, none sold, but there's one listed for $25. Um, because the smoky color is not very common. So, that was kind of fun. This is a little Sven Santa Claus like hand painted. There's no name as far as who painted it, but I just thought he was really cute. So he'll go into next year's Christmas stack. <laughs> this was hilarious. Little Lego Green Bay Packers football player. And uh, I know a good number of Green Bay Packer fans. So he'll be gifted to one of them. And Cindy saw one of these in the bin and goes, Oh, I played with that as a kid. That goes with the Barbie camper. And we found two of them. I said, is there another one? Sure enough. So we found two. And these sell for, you know, around $15 for the pair. So that was a good find. Very excited about that. Also found quite a bit of this um, serger thread. So I all brand new. And so I'll lot all this together. I think we found eight to 10 um, spools made in Japan. And uh, so we'll lot that together and sell that. Okay, here's the cuteness factor. I'm gonna get show a little closer. <laughs> Again, Cindy found this. She always, you know, you think I find great stuff. Cindy always finds great stuff too. But look at this. It's a little tiny saddle purse. Like a little tiny co coin purse. Handmade, um, just adorable. Absolutely adorable. And there's the saddle with the horn, the backrest. And it's got a nice strap. So that'd be darling for a little child. Yeah. <laughs> like that's just awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. What do I want to get into next? All right. Now let's show this. This is a vintage nail file. Oh, still works well. And it's bone. The handle is bone. I don't know if you can see it. There's striations going through it. So there's no markings on it as far as a manufacturer or anything that I can find. Nope. Still no markings. Oh. <laughs> Look twice. And uh, so yeah. So those bone handled uh, utility utensils, stuff like that, can be, you know, worth some good money. Oh, speaking of which another little leather coin purse i remember growing up somebody had these and they're really fun because when you have coins in them you just squeeze them and they open up and then you can reach in and grab your coin and this one's in excellent condition obviously never used and it's costa rica it's a souvenir piece so i don't know how old it is but i just thought it was pretty cool 
didn't really cost anything. All right. There's a Ziploc baggie full of silverware. You guys know me. I always pull out the silverware. Take a look. And so there was this tea infuser, which is kind of fun. I've never seen one where it actually just slides open. Um, didn't look to see if there's any marks. Don't see any marks right off. But that was fun. I just thought that was fun. That it's a little slide open tea fuser. And then there's a little gold spoon made in Japan, stainless steel. So it's just a gold plated little tiny spoon. But there was a set of four of these teaspoons. And you know they're teaspoons because they got teapots at the top of them. Aren't those awesome? I just think those were great. Let's see if there's any marks on these. I didn't even look to see. Nope can't find any marks on those either so and again I don't think those are old I think they're fairly modern but just great little items so our glassware I actually picked these up um, we got four of the Miller Lite and four of the um, Miller Genuine Draft of these beer mugs beer steins looks like it's a Libby brand Libby glasses and these again these things sell well down at the Pink Elephant so those will go down there and I don't have to worry about shipping those because they're pretty heavy. Um, but also, at the same time, we found this Corona Light bandana in the same bin. Still new in package. So that'll go down to the Pink Elephant. Pink Elephant is the antique store where I have a booth. And shelving and, yeah, I'm kind of spread out there. But but it's cool. We, um, Cindy found these too. These are some vintage glasses. Eye glasses, to be specific. They're bifocals. Made in Japan, and uh, they're pure titanium, which I thought was really interesting. Never saw that before, so I have to look them up. But nice 80s kind of style with the large lenses and rounded bottoms. Um, picked up some books, found some great vintage Halloween, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but I'm going to get through the books. I saw this, and I love this cover. It says, Mud's Mongrel's Mischief. Uh, every dog has his day, and a whole pack of offbeat pooches have theirs in the sparkling collection of side-splitting stories by 19 great humorists. Uh, 20 humorous dog stories, it says. So it was published in 1960. I don't think it was ever read. The spine is in perfect condition. These pages... You know, you can tell if you bend it at all, it's going to break, you know, the spine. So, just what a great little book, though. I love that. So that, I will, I can't find this book anywhere either. So, I don't know what I'm going to do. We found some Hardy Boys mysteries. Let's see, how many did we find? Three. We found three Hardy Boys. Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew still sell well. Um, they're still read by many people so i was excited about this book and we looked uh, this is an ansel adams the negative book this is book two i believe there's actually three in this series from what i can understand but ansel adams um always sells well he's got little dusty particles on him um and i say i'm a lot don't i i'm sorry i'll work on that one of my 2022 goals. Try not to say, um, ooh, Iowa State University. It's a fee. He paid his fees. Spring of 1986. Cool. Anyway, so Ansel Adams books usually are very collectible as well. So I think, I can't remember. I did look this up. I think it's probably a $20, $25 book. You have all three of them it's worth more some of you know i'm a big dean Kuntz found cindy found this for me one door away from heaven i believe i've read this one but i'm trying to get all of his books in paperback i mean in hardcover i've got a mix of hardcover and paperback so i thought it'd be great to uh see if i've got that one in hardcover or paperback and then i found this book stories that never grow old it's a children's book uh published in 1950 Nine. Now it's actually 
was originally published before that. It was originally published in 1938. So this is a later publication of it. But again, the great thing about these books is they have such wonderful illustrations. It's hard to find them in excellent condition. Because again, they're children's books. They're well loved. Many fingerprints, torn pages, pencil, crayon. <laughs> um, those type of things. Oh, I just noticed this is missing. Its back page has been tore out. But still, it's a beautiful thing. And some of these, I've thought, you know, you could just cut the illustrations out of these books and frame them. I mean, look at that one. That one would make a beautiful framed print that you could hang in almost any room. You know, it's a deer and wildlife, autumn, you know, use it for autumn decoration. Fabulous. Okay, so this is the, another unusual book. It's not going to be in everybody's library, and it's going to be limited as the the uh, people that want to uh, read this book or buy this book. This is called The Practical Stock Doctor. <laughs> so guess what? It's talking about livestock. History of the horse, anatomy of the cattle, Sheep, swine, poultry, dog, oh. miscellaneous, practical remedies, profitable breeding, a lot of fun stuff. Oh, look, and there's paper, ephemera in here. Um, fertility and manure, rough feeds and fertilizers. Okay. That's interesting. Just flipping through to see if there's any other papers. But yeah, that's a fun little book. Big book, not a little book. All right, so, oh, here's another electronic. I didn't pay separately because it's so light. A uh, little Sony micro cassette player. These can have some value depending on, I have not looked it up or done anything with it. A vintage Garfield plush. I've sold these in the past. This one is dated 1981. Still has a little Dakin, Dakin tag on him. And he's in good shape. He's not very dirty. Just a slight cleaning and he'll be good. All right. So vintage Christmas. These Noma Ornamation collectibles have a really good sell-through rate. Value is 10 to $15. And there is a quarter in there. The ornament paid for itself because it's probably about what we paid for. That's awesome. Uh, that's hilarious. So, yes. So we, I grabbed this. This one is of an elf. He'll slide down. There, he's delivering presents. I don't know if you can see. He's presents are going down this uh, slide to Santa. So, and you plug these into your tree light um, sockets. So. Looks like it should be a pretty fun little ornament. All right. So speaking of finding quarters, in the purse, like I said, we found 80 cents. Cindy found like 31 cents, just loose. And then I just found that quarter. So we have, there's a dollar, 25, 35, 45, 50. We found over a dollar 60 and change at the bin. So hey, that's good. It's a money-making adventure. Picked up this little tiny wooden stand. Um, yeah, put a little sign in there. All right, almost to the vintage Halloween. A few more items and then I'll show you that. I picked up four of these. These are Mr. Christmas ornament snow globe music boxes. So you wind them up and then they spin around. So and uh, so there's four. There's the Christmas tree. There's a penguin. There's a snowman and Santa Claus. All of them in excellent condition. So that was a, you know, they're, they're pretty modern. Not old, but pretty modern. And then we got this bin, and I haven't dug through the whole thing. This whole bin of little tiny 
creatures. Some of these are bigger than others, but the reason we grabbed it is because there's a bunch of these little, you know, like vending machine, quarter vending machine toys at the bottom. There's also some that were marked Polly Pockets, and Polly Pockets are quite collectible. I can't remember what it was that was marked Polly. Oh yeah, this Polly. Um, so yeah, and just a collage of little things. So we'll sort through that, see what's all in here. Again, I'm not expecting anything too exciting, but just a fun little thing in a Swiss Miss marshmallow can. <laughs> Oops, I'll drop things. All right. And then um, found these. These are made in Austria. So these are little placemats, I guess. And two larger ones. No, this is a runner. So this is a, a large runner, Christmas runner, made in Austria. Beautiful pictures. Look at that the trees and the little angel figures and then you know it continues on these guys and there's one two three four of these so to me this is kind of like a little tea set so that would be the runner down the table and then you'd put one of these in each spot to eat your um, tea and crumpets <laughs> found this um, frame with a picture of the Virgin Mary. Pick that up again. I do well with this sort of thing. It's pretty dirty. It's a good clean now that I look at it. And then this is awesome. Look at this. This is an antique, antique as in over 100 years old, tennis racket made by Wright and Ditston. You can see right there out of Boston, Massachusetts. Campbell, the name on there. Campbell was a uh, tennis player from 1890 you know forward but from he, actually he was playing before that but in 1890 he actually won the u.s open at the age of 19 and um, held that title until pete sampras in the 80s took it away from him um when he pete was 19 years old also but he was younger in months and days so anyway so this racket probably dates around 1900, um, which is pretty cool. So I was excited to find this value. I have no idea. I can't find another one that's signed with the Campbell name on it. Um, but other Wright and Didston range from 25 to 180. That's the thing about antique tennis rackets is you never know what it's going to be. So. I found some vintage Halloween cardboard cutouts. Um, these are two-sided. This one's very faded. This one isn't. Um, I wanted to see. This one is. This one is a um, honeycomb, but I'm not sure. It's obviously of a cat, and I'm not sure what it looks like. So let me see if I can quickly undo the string. And it hangs, obviously. So it must be like an accordion thingy that hangs from the ceiling or something. Let's just check it out. We got some time. Oh, yeah. It's one of the streamers. Black and white. Now I'm going to have to try to squeeze this thing back together. And yes, that has, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sell him or not. I might not be able to because he's definitely smells of must, musty, moldy smell. And it's one of these little cats. This is another one dated 1979, the little scarecrow honeycomb with the corn. That's pretty cool. Yep, this one isn't as bad as the cat. The cat got wet. You can it's got some staining on it. This one didn't get wet, but that one did. So you can air them out. There's another scarecrow, 1979 dated. You can air them out um, and set them in the sun to get rid of that smell. 
And I found Frankie. It's a huge Frankie. That's his legs. And make sure I don't break it. Oh, okay. So they go down like that. The arms go out like this. <laughs> it's Frankie! He's looking pretty good for his age. Yeah, no date. But yeah. So these are these will be great for next Halloween. And uh, so we will not store them away without getting them aired out first. And turn, 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 turn. There we go. So that was our haul today. Um I don't want to step on that and hurt myself. Um, so anyway, glad you guys could join us for the fun adventure, and we'll catch you next time.